Hey guys, well, we're back working on the turbo project. So I've jumped ahead a little bit and I've just got this dummy mounted in place. I've gone ahead, got the flange and just made some dodgy brackets just to mount it in place while we start working on the manifold on this side. So this side is going to be quite a bit more complex. So this manifold has to merge and collect, come into the bottom of this, this housing here. And then we're going to tie in the other exhaust manifold, run it down the bottom, up underneath the turbo. So that's where we are working at the moment. So I've got my four into one collector there. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I've uh, done a video on how to make one of those. You can see it up here somewhere. So, I'm going to get into work. I'm going to prep these a little bit more, hit it with the, uh, the MIG welder, and we'll get these, get some progress made. So we've got quite a tight fit up, a little better than the last one I made. There is a very thin gaps in inside, but nothing, nothing that can't be fixed. So I'm quite happy with that fit up. Now it's just time to burn it all together. Now you could use the TIG welder for this, but I think with all the complex positions instead of trying to test my TIG skills any further I'm just gonna use the MIG torch and assemble this making some good headway we've got our four into one collector all finished i've got it tacked together to one little section of the elbow onto this uh this cylinder here so it's going to be an extremely tight fit so we need to leave enough room for the next pipe to come up and merge into here before going into the collector now this is a uh, split style dual pulse Collector. I'm not I'm not concerned about making that work. It just happens to be the turbo I have 
and I don't really care about that, so I might even cut out the center, I don't know yet. But as long as I get that exhaust and the other side joined together, I'm not too concerned what happens with the split pulse manifold there, flange. So, I'm gonna be linking this one to this port, this one underneath, it's gonna be going to the back here, and quite obviously this one here will go into the front. So it's quite a tight environment in here, and I've got a lot of uh, fitting up to do. But I'm very confident I can make this sit together real nice. And once I got this in place, then I will be able to put the other manifold back on and link everything together. Once they're in place, then I can start figuring out the cold side. I've got to still source my wastegate and a bunch of other things before we can get this making some turbo noises. So. I'll get back into this, get to work. All right, so we've made some progress so far. You can see we've got a lot tacked up. A few gaps to fill, but it's all right. I'm not too concerned about that. Oh, here we have the other manifold. So what we need to do now is make sure it's gonna fit in place so may have to disconnect the engine mount up off a little bit and jack the engine up just to get this in place because it's a bit of a squeeze and it's not quite one can go back in so it doesn't really want to go back in its current form i'm gonna try to disconnect the coils pull them off see if that can give a give me enough room and i'll see if i can get this manifold in. All right, so we're able to get it in. All I had to do is pop that off, I was able to slide it in. But now we're having some clearance issues. So I ended up taking the manifold off the motor and, and did a couple of these runners on the bench, just purely because of access issues. But in doing that, I made this drawner here too big and this needs to rotate to give me more clearance in here. You can see there just simply isn't enough there. So I'm gonna get the manifold back on the bench, cut that runner off, and tighten that up a bit, so give us more clearance in the engine bay. So now the uh, modified runner is in place. This is all seating reasonable, and everything's starting to take shape. So the next task we need to do to create a two-in-one merge before it can meet the turbo. So I've started cutting out this uh, little 45 degree bend and I need to start cutting into this collector here to get everything to merge okay. So I'm gonna take that off there. I've got a couple marks where just Dummy that in place. I'll take this off the head and then I'll start cutting it, cutting it down and merging it. All right, so I have this flared out, I've started hacking into it, and I've got a couple tacks in place. So that's kind of the size opening I need. I just need to trial fit it back in the car just to make sure everything's going to work well. So everything just sitting in place the flange looks like it's going to line up might have to do some tweaking with the angle of my little transition piece that looks like once i cut this back an inch or so and then put a 90 or a 45 i'll be able to bend around the chassis and take the pipe down and once that's uh down there then i can put another B-band flange on it, and that will allow for the uh, other collector to run into here. But now that it's you know it's going to work, I'm going to scribe the outside of this Y section, cut that that. I'm going to cut it back where I've scribed, and once that's all cut out, ready to go, I'm going to start TIG welding whole manifold up before I permanently weld that in place. 
because that's going to start interfering with all these pie cuts I've made down there. So that's the plan. I'm going to scribe, cut that, and get it ready for TIG welding. All right, so the rain's come in. It's getting a bit noisy. But as you can see, I've got this marked. I've got a check mark. And now I've got myself a paint marker and make all this a lot easier to see. So I'm going to quickly cut off this tack here and a couple of tacks around. Then I can cut that clean off, make sure everything aligns as it should. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to start TIG welding as much as I can. I'm going to mount that back onto the table, help prevent as much warpage as I can. All right, so I have this mounted to the table. Now, just a little update from one of my last videos. I showed you a few TIG, wel TIG welding cups that I uh, found on eBay. They were just a cheaper set, not any brand name. But what I have found, in very specific circumstances, these cups were quite, quite good. But I found as soon as you move from one spot to another, that it lost gas coverage. So, looking into it a bit more, none of these cups actually have a built-in diffuser. So this is another cheaper gas lens cup. One day I'll actually get a proper set, but for now, I'm experimenting with these. I've got this number 12 cup with a built-in diffuser. So, I want to experiment with that. I've also got a couple other different sizes, but I think they're way too big for what I'm trying to do here. But in my experimentations before, I found a number eight cup in this kit. Where are we? Was actually very quite effective. I got some really good quality welds using that, and I quite quite enjoyed that. So for my steel tick welding. I definitely recommend this number eight cup. Of these glass cups, the number eight still worked, but I think there's a little bit of leaking going around the O-ring. And I think the extra thread that's in these has helped a lot. So I'm gonna stick with these until I get a uh, high quality gas, um, gas lens. I'm gonna stick with these pink ceramic ones. So I'm gonna gear up this torch I'm going to get to TIG welding.
Okay, so we made a few hours into welding. You can see we've made some progress, but there's still a lot of welding to go. So I may have to yet remove these sensor two runners. I figured out that I should be able to fully weld out at least these outside two runners. So I'm gonna fully weld out these two. And once I've done that, I'm gonna weld out as much as I can of these inside joints. This one here, I'm thinking I'm going to have to cut out to get this weld inside here. This one down here, I may be able to reach every last one. But I'm gonna go as far as I can welding this without removing it from the table and that's gonna help reduce the amount of warpage in this flange down there. So in the other exhaust manifold, we do have just a minor piece of uh, warping. Nothing that can't be handled with a milling machine. So when I decided on these flanges here, I decided to go half inch flanges. So it gives us as much meat as we can to actually mill these down to dead flat. That should alleviate any of this warpage. So haven't quite completed these, but that's gonna end it for this episode. It's been a long time filming this. It's been about three or four weeks just working on this one, one manifold. So I'm gonna end up there. It's been a, a while since I've got a video out, so I'll drop this one down. And I'm gonna spend the next several days trying to finish this off for you guys. So hopefully the next episode's not gonna be as long. I've got the other uh, transfer exhaust to do where it merges the driver side and the passenger side manifolds together. So once that's together, this is gonna start looking like a completed uh, hot side of the turbo. So still a lot, lot of work to do, but it's making good progress. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.